Hi everyone, it's Natalie here. Um, I wanted to uh, come back on after watching some of uh, some of the comments and responses um, to the hashtag that I started a couple of months ago um, to sword so negative. Um, I've been really amazed and um, thrilled uh, that that even took off, that, that that's even being looked at or, or talked about at all. Um, I'm such a geek, like I can talk about this stuff <laughs> until the cows come home, you know, um, and almost to the, to the, um, really to the point that I should stop talking about it and, and replying and so on and, and go actually do things that need to be done. But you know, that's, that's how we are sometimes with things that we really are geeked about. So, um, some new thoughts had come to me because it's been a while since that video was made. Um, and when Eva from Ink and Flame and then, um, I'm afraid I wish I wish I knew her first name. I will shortly because I'm loving her channel. But um, Hecate's Crossing. She's in New Zealand. Um, so hi to both of you ladies. Um, and then uh, amazingly, you know, a visit from uh, Jeff from Tattooed Spirit. So hi, Jeff. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm really I'm just really geeked. <laughs> And really tired, um, I have to say. I've, I've been, um, some of you know what my day job is that are that will be watching this. And for some of you that are, are relatively, um, you know, where we're newly acquainted, um, you may not. Uh, but I split my time between working um, for the special school district in the St. Louis area where I live, um, which means usually working usually working in, in schools with uh, kids that have various different learning disabilities, mostly autism, um, and I love them. It's new. It is very, very new to me, so it is really stretching my, um, my skills and my, my knowledge and really my practice, um, you know, my mindfulness practice, my just ability to function day-to-day -day practice. <laughs> um, all of those are being a little bit affected right now uh, because I took a permanent, not a permanent, but like, um, what am I trying to say? I, I'm covering someone's maternity leave. That's what I'm trying to say. So, um, yeah, which is great. So in the process of doing it, uh, in order to have the lug luxury uh, luxury of the, the more full-time income for the moment, um, I'm putting my other work, which is being an end-of-life doula, um, not on hold, but I'm not pursuing it quite as intently right now because, um, I'm still working toward my certification. So yeah. And I, my intention was, yay, I'll have plenty of time. You know, I won't be taking school home with me at night. Right. In theory, because even though it's a long-term assignment, um, you know, as a, as a long-term assignment teacher, I might be taking home you know, grading and lesson planning and, and so on home. And with this, I don't have to do that. But because, because the way that I work with kids and the way that I work with human beings, um, which is that I really, I really love to be with them and be present with them. I really find that, yeah, actually I am kind of taking it home with me. So I often do come home and find that I need to contemplate something that happened or, an interaction that happened between one of the kids that I work with and another adult that maybe I'm like not, not okay with. And I wish that weren't the way things are, but sometimes it is. Um, and then I'm also just exhausted. So I'm, I'm here making a video in part because I want to, uh, because I'm geeked and also in part because I'm trying to make it through that period of time between after school when I get home and, um, you know, bedtime without going to sleep and taking a nap because that's throwing my entire sleep schedule off. So it's really a discipline. <laughs> it's really kind of a discipline of love at this point. So anyway, yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's a wheel of fortune year. I mean, that's, that's just how it is and it's okay. Um, but it's, it's also a lot. So anyway, so thank you for indulging that for a split second there. Um, yeah, I've done a lot of like research and um, 
spent a lot more time really contemplating swords and uh, worked with some clients in the meantime. Of course, I'm not like taking at the moment anyway yet. I'm kind of easing my way back into the idea of taking tarot clients again. I do take the odd person here and there that finds out, oh, you read tarot, you like tarot, I'd love to get a reading. Well, I'd love to read for you. Why not? Let's do it. Um, so I have been reading for people um, here and there, which has been very helpful. And just getting a better sense of like, if I'm not dealing with someone um, who's some, you know, like already a tarot practitioner themselves, or if I'm not dealing with somebody who... Um, What's the word I want? Um, anyway, basically, I don't want to scare the crap out of somebody um, by throwing them a card, you know, that looks like, um, you know, that looks like this, <laughs> right? Which is, it, it's not really, you know, an inherently upsetting card, the Nine of Swords. Um, and I, I also don't kind of want to give them the... the um, you know, death in the afternoon card. Um, little little Hemingway joke there for any literary geeks that might be watching. But, um, you know, I don't want to do that to someone if I can find a way to get the message of the card to them a little bit more clearly. So that's been a task. Um, and I don't like, you know, it's not that you don't, I don't know, I'm a, I am a shadow person. I like shadow work a lot. Um, you know, witness also the the interest in in doing the videos about managing anger. You know, managing. Um, I'd love to do one at some point. I probably will. Uh, although I'm I'm becoming really reticent to kind of say, oh, I'm definitely going to do this because lately any intention I've had of doing that has not worked out the way I intended, and that's okay. Um, but yeah, I I do think at some point I'll probably do some about grief and loss. Um, and how to be with that and, and the, the process of being with that. And obviously, like, I'm attracted to working with things that are kind of dark um, in life. So it doesn't, it's not something that really bothers me in the sense that I don't, you know, I don't, I feel aversive in any way to dealing with swords. And I realized after I made that first video that, like, I could have come across that way um, just because of the way I named the hashtag. And it hadn't occurred to me that that might be the case. Um because I'm definitely not, what I'm definitely not interested in doing is uh, in any way bashing Pamela Coleman Smith's um, artwork and chosen ways of, of depicting the swords. I, th I think they're incredible. And the more I've studied them, the more I've researched them, um, really the more I admire them. I mean, they're, they're really extraordinary what I'm interested in, I think, as much as anything, is finding a way that the elemental associations and the numerological associations and then any other additional, um, you know, further esoteric uh, associations that make, you know, that may be either pinned on them, because we do that with tarot, right? It's a system that can kind of take you know, almost any other system and somehow seem to uh, assimilate it in, in a way that's really extraordinary. Um, but it's also, it's also just an interest in, it's an interest in under, just understanding better and, and finding other ways of viewing um, and portraying the imagery of the, the suit of swords um, that I'm, I'm interested in. So, um, on my original video, my mind is all over the place because I have a lot of ideas and thoughts that have really, uh, been brewing in here all day. It's hard to know where to start. Uh, Going back to death in the afternoon. <laughs> um, I also, something I've forgotten that I did not put in the last video is from, uh, the Indigo Alchemist deck. And it's this Ten of Swords. And I really love this depiction of the Ten of Swords because I'm trying to see if I can get this to focus a little more happily without... Here we go. Um, you can see here that these swords that make up this ladder also contain the whole universe. 
So this is a theme running all the way through this deck. So you can see here with the Hanged Man, um, that's the universe there that's making up the road. So somewhere in each one of her cards um, in this really gorgeous deck is uh, a depiction of the universe. And in this one, you know, as far as I'm concerned, when I get the Ten of Swords in a reading, and I have had it a few times recently, and believe me, if I were to share my whole personal, life, you know, personal professional life, there would be a lot of really good reasons that it will would be showing up for real. Um, and it's not a bad thing. It's absolutely, you know, actually a really positive thing. Where is my... I've got all these decks here that I prepared that are kind of sitting out. At any rate, when I see this, right, when I see the Ten of Swords or when I see the RWS Ten of Swords with all of them, you know, poking out of the guy's back, really, it is this. It is like, hey, you're at the bottom of a hole. This is the end of something or this is as bad as it gets and everything from here on out is better, right? There's the blue sky that's there from the bottom of that well. Um, it's green, it's lush. Um, it's just a matter of climbing up out of the hole, right? That's all. So I love this particular deck um, for working with um, working with people I don't know as well, because if something like this were to come up, and it has actually um, once, it came up once, and it was really, it went over well. <laughs> you know, it was, it was a message the person was able to take without any kind of fear, without trepidation, without like needing me to soften things. I could really just go to the message, which is, wow, you are finding yourself at the bottom of something. Like it, life has just knocked you flat. Um, and clearly things are very difficult for you right now. I'm so sorry you know, that offers space for some empathy because I'm not having to, to spend the time um, explaining a really challenging image. Does that make sense? I mean, that's really kind of where, where I'm coming from with that as much as anything. I don't, you know, I don't usually read, I haven't in past really spent much time reading for people that are inherently like, yeah, here we go, afraid of tarot cards. Um, but I have, and because I've been away from them for so long and interested in so many other things, uh, including teaching and art and Buddhism, I think people that would not ordinarily have been interested in tarot are suddenly like, oh, you, you do tarot cards. Wow, you could, I would totally let you read for me, which is great. And I don't, because of the relationships that I have with some of these folks, the last thing I want to do... Um, is put them in a position, even though I think they probably could handle it, actually, and probably would trust me to handle it. But I don't want to complicate, I guess, um, an already potentially challenging message with something like this. I don't know if that makes sense. But it's this is tough. Um, actually, I was in a workshop over the weekend um, with a really fabulous uh, reader and teacher by the name of Melissa Sanova. And uh, she's written two really fantastic books that I probably should have pulled out if I was going to mention her. Um, her first book, which many of you may be familiar with, is Kitchen Table Tarot. And there's her name, Melissa Sanova. And her other book, um, which is her new one, Tarot Elements. And... Um, I think Benabel, it was Benabel when just did a, a um, video last weekend. I think it was on Saturday, actually, the same day, um, for a, uh, a reading that's in here um, to balance out water, you know, a cups reading to really balance out water. Um, and it was beautiful. It was, she really gave such a charming endorsement that was really heartfelt. Um, and then when I showed up, I said, oh, hey, did you know that, <laughs> did you see that Benabel did a video um, and featured one of, you know, one of your, your spreads from, from the book? And she was like, oh, she would, you know, <laughs> she's a great person. It was just really cool. It's a very small, this is a small world. You know, the, the tarot community is really quite small. Um, 
it's very humbling to be part of it uh, and really a, a great honor. Um, something, though, that, that she had said was, when, when we were talking about this card, was when she has this one come up in a reading, and I tend to agree, um, it's usually that, like, different factors in a person's life, you know, things that are going on with them that are really tough, really difficult, really painful, um, they're coming from outside. They're not something that's happening inside your own mind. I mean, the, nobody can stab themselves in the back like this, right? Um, this is not how, this just isn't the way of things. It comes from somewhere else. Other people stab us in the back. Conditions metaphorically stab us in the back um, and knock us flat. Um, and as Jeff pointed out last night, and then Melissa also had pointed this out, if you can see the way that his hand is, um, it's in the uh, gesture, it's in the same gesture as the Hierophant, and it's a blessing. It's a blessing, um, which is really beautiful, you know, so it's, it's a way of taking, taking the swords that, that are, um, that are handed to you and finding a way to be blessed, just, you know, regardless of that you know, and, and to find a way forward regardless of, of what life hands you. However, the truth and the reality is that if somebody is having this come up, um, it's because everything in their life probably went to shit uh, and has, has really been difficult. Certainly for me, that's that's definitely the case. You know, a lot, watching a lot of, um, just a lot of changes, a lot of difficult things that have come up, um, you know, this one came up a lot around some betrayal last fall that took place um, with someone I thought I knew very well uh, and was really shocked by. So, you know, this is this is not a card that's you know comes easily. But Melissa pointed out, um, usually that's the worst that it gets. You know, that is that is the moment that is. Uh, you know, it can't, you can't go any lower, <laughs> Claire, you know, to be clear, you can't get it any lower than this. Um, and the only way out, you know, the only way is up really, you know, everything, everything looks up from here. So I really, I, I, that's really why I like this depiction. I feel like it's, it's a very, um, it's truthful. It doesn't really deviate too far away from, um, the meaning, you know, or the, yeah, I think so. The meaning in this one, I mean, I guess somebody could get themselves down a hole like this, right? We could, we could throw ourselves down a hole like this. Um, whereas this one carries a definite sense that this person could never have done this to themselves. This has just been the conditions of, of their lives for a while. You know, something that she mentioned was, um, you know, people being, um, encountering with just, uh, you know, just awful betrayals, um, deaths, lots of deaths, illness, um, deceit, people uh, tur literally turning on them and stabbing them in the back or, you know, metaphorically being thrown under the bus, um, being cheated on by a spouse, things like that, you know, those kinds of things. Um, and, you know, whereas... You know, with the nine of wands, right, this guy is waiting for the next thing, right? This guy is in a place where, you know, what's next? I Everything everything has come down on me. It has been so awful and so rough. What's the next thing? Just bring it on because I'm ready to take it and I'm ready to cope with it, right? So that's really where this guy is coming from. But by the time you get to this place... Um, in the swords, it's already come. It's come and gone and it's knocked you flat. So yeah, that's, um, that's where that one's coming from. Something else. Let's see something. Well, it's probably for another video. Yeah, I think I'll save that part for another video. It's, uh, there's some more RWS things I want to geek on, but we can't geek on everything. <laughs> we can't geek on everything in one video, right? Um, sometimes it's helpful to spread these things out. So with that said, yes, I think sometimes it is better to spread things out into more than one video. And for the sake of <clears throat> my time, your time, 
uploading time, I'm going to uh, cut and paste this video just a little bit and add some interjections like the one I just made and put in as I was just kind of going back through the video and editing. Um, yeah, so we'll leave those for another day. I have a lot of other stuff I can show you and further ruminations that I'm really super excited to share, uh, but which, I, again, I will save for another time. So thank you so much for watching, everybody, and I really look forward to continuing to engage um, anyone who's interested in this topic and in terms of just looking at it, discussing it, and geeking further together. So thank you so much for watching, and thank you for being here. All right, take care. Bye.